Hey everybody, Tyler Hart here, back with another Microtech routing video. We already did a video about OSPF routing, where we just did a really simple, straightforward, uh, single area OSPF deployment. Uh, I'm working on a video right now for multi-area OSPF, but in the meantime, I wanted to bang out something really, really quick for you to show you how to do static routing on Microtech. Uh, static routing is perfectly applicable uh, if your network is a little bit on the smaller side or if your network doesn't change very much at all. Um, if you can maintain the routes manually without adding too much administrative overhead, uh, this is a perfect solution for you. Now, just for consistency, uh, if you've already watched the OSPF routing video, you'll notice that we're using the exact same network topology as we did before. Uh, I'm hoping that this will allow you to easily compare and contrast the two different solutions, one dynamic and one static. Uh, we've got a top router, we got a bottom router, we have LANs connected to each, we have a slash 30 point to point network connecting the two. Now in the OSPF video, we did use the loopback addresses um, as the router identity in OSPF. We don't necessarily need to deploy the loopback addresses here with static routing, but I find that it is nice to have um, a management IP address for each router rather than having to know, well, which connections are on which router, so that determines which IP addresses I'll be SSHing into. It's just a little bit easier having the loopback. So we'll implement that here, um, even though it's not necessary to make static routing work. Now I've got two routers, like I already said, we got the top and the bottom. Uh, almost no configuration has been done on these routers yet. Um, there's no default route. Um, there's no static routes either for that matter, no WAN addresses, no LAN addresses other than some management IPs that I use uh, to get into the back end because the via Winbox and other things uh, because these are virtualized routers, but you don't need to concern yourself with that. So the first thing we'll do, we'll set up the LAN addresses, we'll set up the WAN addresses, we'll verify WAN connectivity, and then we'll move on to the static routing. So first off, I said we do the LAN addresses, so let's bang those out right now. We'll start on the top router. Verify that I am on the right device, looks like I am. Now when I click through these drop-down menus, you're not going to be able to see them because Winbox renders these drop-down menus as separate windows. We're not doing a full monitor capture, I'm just doing a window capture. So I'm going to tell you what I'm clicking on as I'm clicking it. So we're going to go to IP and then addresses. Uh, like I said before, I have some management IPs. Um, you don't need to worry about what this is. Just just pretend it doesn't exist. So our LANs are connected to Ether2. Our WANs are connected to Ether1, as you see in the topology. So since we're on the top router, our LANs are going to be 10.1.1 and 10.1.2 subnets. So we'll switch to Ether2, and we'll do 10.1.1.1 slash 24. I'm using uh, the lowest IP address, dot one, as the gateway for the LAN. You can use the highest if you want, dot 254. Uh, different people like to do different things. It won't change any functionality for our purposes. Go 10.1.2.1 slash 24. We will choose Ether2. All right, so we have two LAN addresses on our top router. Let's switch on over to the bottom router and do the exact same thing. So here on the bottom router, we're going to go to IP and addresses again. Again, just ignore my management IP, not important. I'm going to choose Ether2. And our LAN addresses, I know one of them is a little hard to see because my big old noggin's in the way. Um, we got 10.9.1 and 10.9.2. So 10.9.1.1 slash 24 on Ether2 and 10.9.2.1 slash 24 also on Ether2. Okay, so we've got LAN addresses set up on both routers. Since we're, on, since we're already here, let's just go ahead and put the WAN IP address on the bottom. This will be on Ether1. So looking at my topology, it looks like 10.255.0.2 slash 30 is my WAN IP on Ether1 for the bottom. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the top router. We'll assign the WAN IP there. 
It looks like it's 10.255.255. Come on, you gotta type right. You gotta be able to put the IP addresses in. That's a prerequisite. Uh, Ether1. There we go. All right, so before we go any further, let's verify our IP connectivity from the top router to the bottom router. If we don't have IP connectivity, our static routing won't work. We can put in all the right routes that we want, but they're not gonna function properly without that slash 30 link. So I'm gonna go to tools and then ping. Uh, since we're on the top router, let's ping the other side of the slash 30, 10.255.0.2 start all right there we go we are good to go for wan ip connectivity now we'll move on to the static routes so a bit of a refresher here if you're not super up on routing and specifically static routes a static route is a route that you enter manually into the route table that tells your router if you have traffic for this particular subnet or this particular IP, I want you to send that traffic via this gateway address. You are pointing your router in the right direction. So for our purposes here in this video, on the top router, we are going to point to the bottom router for the 10.9 LAN addresses. On the bottom router, we're going to point to the top router for the 10.1.1 and 10.1.2 addresses. So we're just pointing one at the other, saying if you want to get to that LAN, you go talk to that router first. So we're already on the top router, so we'll just go ahead and do this. So we're on the top router, putting in routes for the bottom. So we're going to go to IP and then routes. You'll notice that I already have some routes in here. I have two routes for my LAN, and I have a route for my WAN. So these are all dynamic, active, and connected routes. So these routes, we didn't create these. These were, routes were created by the router itself when we added the IP addresses on the interface. Now we're going to add some routes manually. So since I'm on the top, I'm pointing to the subnets on the bottom. So I'm gonna tell the router, if you wanna to get to 10.9.1.0 24, you, uh, Winbox always does this, it drives me nuts. It has issues with resizing. So if you want to get to 10.9.1.0 slash 24, I need you to pass off the traffic to 10.255.0.2, which is the bottom router. So we have traffic destined for like 10.9.1.1. Our router sees it, it does a route lookup. It says, oh yeah, I got a route for the 10.9.1 network. I need to send that traffic to 10.255.0.2. And whatever that device is, that device will handle that traffic for me. Well, then, so our traffic will get to 10.255.0.2. That router will then do a route lookup. And it'll say, oh yeah, I got a directly connected route for 10.9.1.0. Let me pass this traffic off to the LAN interface to be forwarded to the host. So something we can do if you have to enter a bunch of static routes, you can always just copy the routes that you have already put in. So in this case, I only need to change one number, two. So now I have, oh, yep. So now I have two static routes here. I, I misread one of them, I thought I goofed. So I've got a route for 10.9.1, 10.9.2, and both of them are reachable. So let's go to the bottom router. Let's do the exact same thing. We're gonna point the bottom router to the top, under IP and then routes. Winbox, yep, Winbox did it again. What is the deal? So on the bottom router, we're gonna to point to 10.1.1.0 24, and the gateway is the WAN IP for the top router, 10.255.0.1. Oh, once again, it is reachable. I could just copy the existing entry, but let's just let's just type it in just so we can feel like we did some work today. All right, both of them are reachable. So let me show you what it looks like when we have a route that's not reachable. 
I'm gonna go ahead and disable Ether1 here on the bottom router, just so that you can see the routing table change. I'm gonna choose Ether1, and I'm going to disable it, and watch the two static routes. There we go, they become unreachable. So when an interface goes down, your static routes aren't removed from the routing table necessarily, but they are marked as unreachable and they're not then used to forward traffic. Now when the link comes back up and the router discovers that the gateway is reachable again, then they'll be used once more to forward traffic. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and re-enable our WAN interface and we'll watch those routes transition. There we go. Our routes are back to being reachable. So since we're on the bottom router, let's go ahead and ping a LAN IP address on the top. That will force our router to do a route lookup, pass our traffic off to the top router. The top router will do a lookup, pass the traffic off to the LAN, and it will come back to us. So let's ping 10.1.1.1. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Once again, let me take down the WAN. I'll show you what a ping looks like when your gateway for that route is not reachable. Go back to interfaces here. Disable Ether1. Let's do another ping. No route to host. The router's saying, hey, I don't know how to get there. Let's go ahead and re-enable that interface. Yep, there we go. We got pings coming back. All right, we are good to go on our static routes. One last thing to do. I told you we don't have to do it, but we probably should do it. And that's the loopback. So we're still on the bottom router. So I'll just go ahead and create the loopback on the bottom router first. We may as well close out of some of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click bridge. And I'm going to create a bridge interface. This is a virtual interface. It's not going to be connected to any physical interface, but we are going to put an IP address on it and we're going to put some static routes in pointing to it. We're going to call this our loopback. Hit OK. Now we're going to go to IP and then addresses. We're going to add an address to loopback. 10.255.255.2. Okay, I really like having a loopback address on a virtual interface. The nice thing is the virtual interface is always up, regardless of whether Ether 1 or 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, how many interfaces you have, regardless of whether those go up or down, or you have routes that are flapping or an interface is flapping or whatever, the loopback is always there and that IP address is always available. So let's go to the top router create the exact same thing on the top. We will create a bridge, call it a loop back. Okay. Go to IP and then addresses. Add 10.255.255.2. Loop back. Now notice these are slash, if you look on the topology, these are slash 32 addresses. I could put slash 32 in here if I wanted to or I can just leave it without the CIDR mask. Um, if router OS sees that you've put an IP address in without the CIDR mask, it just assumes that it's a slash 32 address. So you can, you can be kind of lazy and fudge the CIDR on this one. All right, let me close out of the IP addresses here. All right. So, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, I did a bad thing. Did you see what I did? I put the right IP address on the bottom router. But look at the top router. Uh-uh. This should be 10.255.255.1. Oops. This is why we always have a topology diagram with our IP addresses so that we have something to check our work against. There we go. All right. Now we are in business. So we're going to put a static route in, just like we did for the LANs on the bottom router. We're doing this on the top since we're on the top router as well. We're going to put the same kind of route in, but we're going to do it for that loopback. So 
if you want to get to 10.255.255.2, you need to go to 10.255.0.2. All right, and it says it's reachable. Let's go to the bottom. Do the same thing on the bottom. IP, let's add a route. 10.255.255.1 because we're on the bottom pointing to the loop back on the top and 10.255.0.1 is the gateway Oop. so let's try and ping that loop back address from the bottom I'm going to go to tools and then ping put 10.255.255.1 Beautiful. All right, we got a good ping from that loopback. So you can use this loopback address for monitoring, like in SolarWinds or the Dude or OpenNMS or 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 I think it's Libra NMS. Actually, I'm confusing my systems. Um, but you can use that loopback address for monitoring as well as for out of band management, and it will always be up, always be available, regardless of what your other interfaces are doing. It's pretty slick. So that's all I have for you on static routing with Microtik. I hope the video was helpful. Um, we're building content on a daily basis here. Uh, we're researching stuff with the newer versions of router OS like WireGuard VPN, uh, the newer features that have been brought into BGP with the router OS 7 beta. Uh, so we've got new videos coming your way. I really hope you'll subscribe. If you found the video uh, helpful in your network, go ahead, throw us a like, throw us a comment. Let us know that we're, we're talking about the things that are important to you. And we'll see you in the next video.